calling us the dishonest press, the disgusting press. But I disagree with that, sir. And if I can ask you this question, it, it seems as though you're resistant to scrutiny, the kind of scrutiny that comes with running for president of the United States. I like scrutiny, but you know what? When I raise money, excuse me, excuse me. I've watched you on television. You're a real beauty. Uh, when I raise money for the veterans, and it's a massive amount of money, find out how much Hillary Clinton's given to the veterans. Nothing. I've got a couple of questions for you. Which presidential candidate would you trust more with a secret? Or who would you rather invite to a barbecue? You can let us know. one eight seven seven newsmax We'll get to those comments in just a few minutes. But first, there may be no better media master than the man you just saw on your screen, Donald Trump, pummeling the press over their questions surrounding his donations to veterans' charities. While some un, uh, un, uh, ugly information surfaces in court documents from the Trump University case. Will this make any difference at all to voters? Let's jump into the Wednesday edition of The Political Animal. Welcome back, veteran senior contributor at The Federalist, D.C. McAllister, also joining us, veteran Democratic strategist and speechwriter from Catamount Strategies, LLC, Christian Hanley. Thanks so much for being with us, guys. Thank you. All right, I want to go uh, into something that Donald Trump talked about yesterday, and that is this federal court judge in Indiana, Gonzalo Curiel. He's the federal judge presiding over these class, class action lawsuits against Trump University and Donald Trump himself. At a campaign rally in San Diego, Trump uh, dedicated 12 minutes to slamming the judge, talking about his Mexican heritage, etc. Here you go. We're in front of a very hostile judge. The judge was appointed by Barack Obama, federal judge. I mean, frankly, he should recuse himself because he's given us ruling after ruling after ruling, negative, negative, negative. What happens is the judge who happens to be, we believe, Mexican, which is great, I think that's fine. Well, of course, it's worth noting that Judge Curiel was born in Indiana in 1953 to Mexican immigrants. Uh, D.C., Donald Trump does this to get his, his supporters all riled up. Not something a presidential candidate would normally do, calling out the ethnicity or race of a federal court judge. Uh, What'd you do when you heard Donald Trump say this? You wince a little bit? I do wince, but I do have to correct you. I think Democrats often play the race oh, and sure. racial identity politics. I mean, sure. they don't do it in quite in this fashion in such common language, but they do it nonetheless, and they're very good at it, and they do it all the time. We're just getting a lot more blatant and a lot more common language from Donald Trump. He is trying to just blur the waters, distract people about what's going on with this lawsuit. He's going to get people riled up and he's going to paint it in a political picture about this is somehow perfect against him because of racial issues. And I think because of that, he probably will dilute it enough that it won't affect him this race. And one of the lawsuits doesn't go forward to the train until after November anyway, the November anyway, so I don't think it's going to make much of a difference for him. Yeah, I don't really see these lawsuits hurting Donald Trump much, considering everything else that's been thrown at him that hasn't really stuck. But that comment he made, though, Christian, about uh, the background, the heritage of a federal court judge who was born in this country, a naturalized U.S. citizen, uh, you know, again, that's something a, a presidential candidate probably wouldn't do if it weren't for Donald Trump. Will this hurt him, though, the way he talked about a federal judge? I wish it would. It should hurt him. It would hurt any other candidate for this office. Uh, and there's no reason why it shouldn't hurt him except for the fact that he is Donald Trump and he's a master manipulator. But bear in mind what he's doing here is not just questioning someone's loyalty and someone's competence based upon racial origin. He's also questioning the impartiality of a federal judge. If he's going to be president but, of the but United States, let me stop you there, States, Christian, because President Obama did virtually the exact same like thing. That. Christian, hold on, hold on, hold on. President Obama did almost exactly the same thing during his State of the Union speech when he called out Samuel Alito and John Roberts uh, during that speech. Is it okay for President Obama to do it, not for Donald Trump, though? I don't recall President Obama ever slamming them based upon their heritage. No, but he, he, he criticized them for their uh, ideological viewpoints in, in terms of Citizen United. What he criticized them for was bringing politics into what should be our only apolitical branch of government. He did not question their analysis on the bench based upon their heritage. It's two completely distinguishable issues. D.C., do you think they're two different issues? Well, Barack Obama's done that a lot with the police. I mean, he's done that, and you know, he, all the time. He's inserted himself into the into racial politics all the time. So he's called their partiality into question over and over and over again. 
and I think people are sick of, and this is what Donald Trump is playing on. Do I like the tactics necessarily? No, they're Alinskyite, but they work, and the right has, has been beat up by it for years, and we're sick of it, and this is what Donald Trump is doing. So the left has some blame to take on this, and they need to own it. I think, you know, when Donald Trump does this, and you, you saw him there pause in that moment, waiting for the crowd to respond. I, you know, I don't think he harbors any ill will towards uh, this judge, but for this case that he's facing, he's doing this to get a reaction out of the audience. I think we'll, we'll, we'll find out more. It's probably not the end of this, but we'll see more. I want to move on, though, and talk about this Quinnipiac poll that came out today from Quinnipiac University uh, and some character traits that they took take a look at. Hillary Clinton has a small lead on Donald Trump, very close to the margin of error, though. But when you look at kind of head-to-head matchups on certain issues, 56 percent of the people surveyed believe that Hillary is better prepared to be president. 51 percent say she's more intelligent. Um, 47 Seven percent say she has higher moral standards, so Donald Trump wins that head-to-head matchup. Fifty-one percent say she's better at, better at handling immigration, and fifty-three percent say Clinton is better at responding to an international crisis. Now, where does Donald Trump stack up in this poll? Here's where he comes in ahead of Hillary Clinton. Not very many places, with the exception of creating jobs. Better at creating jobs, but everything else, he's underwater to Hillary Clinton. More people would like to invite Hillary Clinton to a barbecue, I believe. More people see her as a stronger leader, I think, and more effective. I think it was Donald Trump. Go ahead. Donald Trump, they want him at the barbecue. Okay. It was right? 40, it's 48% according to our graph. That might be wrong. I guess it was Hillary Clinton. More people would share a secret with her. But when you look at those numbers, uh, particularly when you look at uh, the moral standards issue, is there any one of those things that stands out to you, Christian, that could be a deciding factor in this race for voters, independent voters specifically? Uh, not one thing jumps out. I mean, look, what these what these national polls do is they kind of give us sort of a gut check for the nation as a whole, and they're very interesting in that sense. But uh, because we do have state-by-state state elections in this country and the Electoral College, they really don't uh, decide, the, they don't show what will decide the election by themselves. So, I, you know, it's an interesting read, but nothing jumped out to me in, in that regard, no. You know, there's, there's always that saying, it's the economy stupid. DC, do you think right. that the economy is still... You know, it's kind of boring to say it, but still the number one issue driving this election. It is. It's people's livelihoods. It's, it's their jobs. And I think it's going to matter a lot. And I think it's going to get the edge to Trump. Uh, what I think is interesting is that these polls are closing. The, the trend is and the drift is toward Trump. Uh, so Hillary Clinton is losing ground and he's gaining it. And he's, she, he's also gaining it among Republicans themselves. I mean, the lead that Hill Clinton had with Republican voters has been cut in half in the last month. So he's got traction. And that says a lot. I think it doesn't bode well for her in the long term, unless something big happens, of course. All right, guys, I want to take a couple callers. If you could stay on with us, we got Brenda from Grove, Oklahoma. Brenda is praying that Donald Trump wins. Brenda, it's great to have you with us. Do you have a question or comment for myself or Christian or DC? Yes, I kind of do. I'm wondering when they're going to start uh, bringing out all this stuff on Hillary, especially, you know, her and Bill's involvement over there in Haiti. I mean, I saw something a, quite a while back on 2020 or 60 Minutes where they had all this money and were supposed to build homes and they built a playground and a little house and that was it. I just wondered. I guess Donald Trump will do that. Also, I do have one thing, to com one comment. Uh, okay. Last night we were watching Waters World and they were asking about Hillary there. Is it Tepequata? where she's from, where the house is. And anyway, Capricorn, New York. They were, they were, he was asking people. And, of course, all the women say they would vote for Hillary so we could have a woman in for president. And then they asked this one African-American man, an older gentleman, and they asked him, do you, and he said, do you think Benghazi will hurt her? And he goes, the guy goes, he goes, I don't know. Who, I've never heard of Benghazi, but I'm going to go ahead and vote for Hillary. Well, I think, you know, especially in a place like Chappaqua, where the Clintons have uh, one of their home bases, I think it's going to be you're going to be hard pressed to find somebody who's going to speak ill about them in their own backyard. That said, you know, there are a lot of independent voters out there. And if you ask Democrats, uh, Christian, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Nobody cares about Benghazi on the Democratic side or about the email. But I think that's a much different story when it comes to independent voters and Republicans. Uh, it is a different story outside of the party, certainly. And I would have to agree, you know, if you're if you're polling people, you're talking to people on the street, 
uh, in the hometown of really anyone, right. not just the Clintons. It'd be very hard. You'd be hard pressed to find somebody who will speak ill of them right there in their own backyard. That's not really surprising to hear. Yeah, DC, uh, we'll give you the last word. 30 seconds left. I think the women's vote is going to be a very interesting dynamic for the rest of this race. I think that Donald Trump has a lot of room to improve, meaning that he can improve a bit. Hillary, I think she does have a problem with the women, even though she beats him, according to the women. But I think that that's something that Donald Trump can gain ground and, and won't be as much of a factor as people think. Yeah, you look, you, you look at the crosstabs of that Quinnipiac poll, you look at the gender gap. It's about exactly where it was in 2012 huge 20-point gender gap between men and women, who they prefer, Democrats, Republicans, Hillary Clinton, Mitt Romney, Barack Obama. Very fascinating stuff. Great to speak with you guys. Christian, D.C., love to have you back real soon. Stick around. we got more to come. Craig Shirley is going to be with us very soon. We're back after this.